Hello and welcome. Today we're gonna to be talking about a lot of different Food Aid brushes. And I'd like to say thank you to Food Aid Beauty because they are providing the brushes in today's video. And they're also sponsoring a giveaway. So you've probably seen me use this brush quite a bit. I actually purchased this, um, I don't know, two years ago, a year ago, whenever this came out. Uh, but this is the Koyoto Yoshiki Monochrome metallic gradient brush. This is the powder brush. There is a fox version as well. This is the gray squirrel. And Fude Beauty is going to be hosting a giveaway for this brush. Now it's a giveaway with purchase. So you have one month to uh, purchase anything from Fude Beauty using my link and that will enter you into the giveaway. And then one winner will receive this brush and they will be randomly selected from you know whoever purchased using the link. So the link is down below in the description box. This, I mean, I'm sure you've seen me use this countless times. I believe I used it during the like the clay to poe powder video, the Burberry powder video. It's one of my most used powder brushes. So we're gonna take a look at this today as well as a few other brushes. So Tao House is a brand that is new to me. This is my first time using the brand. And this series here with these light maple wood handles, these this is the C series. And I have some brushes from here as well as some brushes featuring this ebony wood handle from the Ode series. We're gonna take a look and see how they compare, but the C series, just so you know, is a limited edition. The reason that these are limited edition is because the hairs that they use throughout this series, they are older hair. So they are ones that are, you know, around a decade old or up to a decade old. So they're not sourcing new hairs for this. These are all, so these are all hairs that have been previously collected. So because of that, this is a limited edition series because once their batch runs out, you know, it's not like they can just go back and get more, uh, you know, keeping the same quality. So let's start off by looking at these three powder brushes. So again, this one here is the Koyoto Yoshiki Monochrome Metallic Gradient Powder Brush. This has gray squirrel and it is an incredibly soft powder brush you can see we do have a round flat shape you can see how it glides on the skin so i'm going to show you each of these brushes briefly and then we'll look at the demos using these brushes while we talk about the details next up we have the c series from tao house and you can see we've got the tao house written on here we've got a maple wood handle and in comparison, you can see it is going to be a shorter brush. And you can see that overall, it is going to be a bit smaller, but we do have a similar shape. The uh, Yoshiki brush is a little bit more square. So you can see this one here also flows very nicely because it is a little bit smaller in our brush head. You can see the flow is just a little bit different. It feels a little bit more dense. And this one here is going to be a gray squirrel. And then next, this is from the Oat series from Tao House. You can see we've got Tao House engraved in the ebony wood handle. We've got this really nice matte black ferrule, just like on the C series, they both have matte black ferrules. And this one here is gonna be gray squirrel and goat mixed together. So this one's gonna be a little bit more resilient. It's not quite as soft as the Yoshiki or the C series. And by comparison though, you can see, first of all, the Ode series, we've got rounded handles versus the flat handle of the C series. And then you can see that our brush head here is going to be larger. So by larger, I mean we've got longer bristles. It is, of course, always harder to get those longer bristle hairs, which makes them kind of a premium. We have a similar, actual shape on the top, but again, it is going to be longer than both the Yoshiki Monochrome and the C-Series brush. So that makes this, in my opinion, a really great brush for finishing powder because you get that really light, airy feel on there. So this one will be the airiest of the three. Let's take a look at the demos. So the Koyoto Yoshiki Monochrome brush, this again is gray squirrel. We have a round flat shape 
and the brush length is 175 millimeters the bristles are 50 millimeters and all three of these powder brushes are going to be recommended for powder products because we are using squirrel hair in all three of these brushes so you do want to treat them delicately if you have oilier skin and, or perhaps you uh, you know don't necessarily need a super super soft brush then you might want to consider the ode series powder brush because the goat hair in there it adds a little bit more resiliency to the hairs and if you do have oilier skin if you're not cleaning your brushes on a regular basis as in like you know pretty frequently then you're going to end up getting oils coating on the brushes and those oils over time can either damage the hairs or they can just cause your products to kind of gunk up a little bit when you're applying them. So if you do have oilier skin, the goat hair is a better choice in that sense. Now looking at all three of these powder brushes, for the demo, I'm using the Clay de Peau Refining Press Powder for all of these brushes on top of the Clay de Peau, the foundation in shade I-10. So we're keeping everything the same, even amongst the different days here in the demos. The Yoshiki series in general is a series of brushes that was created by Yoshiki Fujimori, who is the founder of Koyoto and one of the great masters of Kumano. So he, you know, the brushes in there he either helps create or he oversees, but he is directly responsible for, you know, selecting the best quality and the shapes and so forth. Now, the particular handle that we're looking at here with this metallic gradient was inspired by a moonlit sky. And I think it's really beautiful. So, you know, I, I couldn't resist this brush. <laughs> so this particular brush has a length of 175 millimeters and a bristle length of 50 millimeters and it is all gray squirrel so it's going to be very soft now similarly we're looking at the Tao house c series so we've got this nice maplewood handle it's flat so if you really want to you could stand this up on your desk or vanity or wherever you do your makeup this one also is complete with gray squirrel and in this case it's also a round flat brush but this is going to be a little bit smaller so instead of the 175 millimeter brush length of the yoshiki we are looking at 155 millimeters so it's a little bit shorter and our bristle length is just two millimeters shorter at 48 so both of these two brushes here being complete with gray squirrel are really ideal for those with sensitive skin who are looking for the softest touch on their skin both of these brushes are really great for you know any sort of powder products on the face such as setting powder finishing powder you could even use these for blush bronzer you know i like these for those soft very light illuminating blushes as well so i think these are both great options but if you are looking for something more versatile the c series brush is a little bit more versatile than the yoshiki just because it's slightly smaller brush head so it's a little bit easier to use for like blush and other applications other than just powder so it kind of depends what you're looking for there now taking a look at the tao house ode series brush this one here is a mix of the gray squirrel and the goat hairs so this you know you might think okay gray squirrel we're mixing some goat hair you know perhaps that is not going to be as premium of, of a brush you'd be wrong <laughs> so the reason this is such a great brush is because this one has very long brush hairs so this one has a length of 150 millimeters for our brush length and 55 millimeters for the bristles so it's five millimeters longer than the yoshiki seven millimeters longer than the c series brush so what that means is this brush is going to be a little bit airier on the skin it's going to give you that really light finish if you have dry skin and you're looking for the lightest touch of powder this is a brush that would be ideal for applying setting or finishing powder if you have oily skin the goat hair in here helps add a little bit more resiliency to the brush hairs so if you are somebody who does have oily skin and sometimes you're worried about using straight up like squirrel hair or something something very soft on your skin because of the oils getting on there the goat hair does kind of help 
with that. So sometimes if you do have oily skin or your products are not completely dry, you can get some of that product or that oil on your bristle hairs. And if you don't clean them off right away, they can, you know, kind of mess up your next application, causing it to like gunk up a little bit. So the Go Hair in here, it's a little bit more resilient. It's easier to wipe clean in a way. And, you know, cause it's just not as delicate. So it is easier to use uh, in that sense and in that application. So as we're looking at these three brushes, we have the Yoshiki Monochrome, C-Series, and this is the Ode Series. So you can see that out of the three of these, the, let me just line up the tops of the ferrules, you can see that our bristle length is definitely going to be uh, longest in the Ode Series, and it looks pretty si significant. Shape-wise, these are all round flat brushes. So we do have kind of that pinched ferrule here we go up, and we have kind of this oval shape. Now on all of these brushes, you can see that we do have a, a curvature here, giving you more of a flat point at the top, but it is gonna be most evident on these two because this one is so long, it's airier, so it fluffs out a little bit more. And because of that, you know, you might not notice the angle quite as much, but it is gonna be there on all of the brushes. And these two are going to be just slightly more dense feeling because they are a little bit shorter. But if you are looking for something the most versatile, this one here from the C series, you can see it fits very well for bronzer, for blush, for powder and so forth. So this one here is going to be a little bit more, you know, full service. Whereas the Yoshiki Monochrome, that's probably next just due to the size. This is gonna be more of a, a medium size. Personally, I like to use this one for setting and finishing powder, and that's what I use mine for. And I keep it right here next to me, and I use it pretty much every day. Let's take a look at a few comparisons. And I want to start off with this one here from the Ode series because, you know, a couple years ago or a year ago, I don't remember when, but this is Ihoto. This is their Goldfish brush. This is a finishing powder brush. And I picked this up, and it was my first brush shape that was quite like this. You can see it's kind of like a fluffy paddle paintbrush style. And this is one of my favorite brushes for a light dusting of finishing powder. And that's exactly what this reminds me of. You can see it's a slightly smaller version of that brush head. Now this one here is going to be all gray squirrel. And this one again has the goat hair mixed in. So it's not quite as soft as the Ihoto, but you can see it's a very similar shape. This was limited edition and I haven't seen this come back in a while. So just something to note, but I think if you missed out on this one, it's a, this is a good option. However, if you do have very sensitive skin, this one is just not going to be as soft as some of your other options. Now I want to bring out this one here. This is the Chico Hodo uh, Ren powder brush. And I wanted to bring this out just because I did recently feature this on my channel. So, uh, you know, in case anybody did purchase that, you can see that this is going to be a much more rounded ferrule versus any of these here. So, can see the fluffiness, this is gonna be much more round. So I just wanted to kind of show you the difference in the shape with those. Likewise, we have the Chikahoto. This is the F09 and the F01. So these are both powder brushes. The F01 came out first, the F09 came out basically because people wanted a larger powder brush. But I wanted to show you how those compare. So you can see that the F09 is gonna be more round than the ones that we're featuring here today. So I'm gonna take out the F09. Let's take a look at the F01. And you can see, even so, our barrel is not as pinched. It's gonna be a little bit more rounded. And our shape is gonna be just slightly more square. So that's the Yoshiki. And then this here is the C-Series, which you can see is gonna be a bit more rounded at the top compared to the F.O. brush. And then here is the uh, Ode Series brush. And do have a loose hair here. When you get new brushes, is nothing to be alarmed about if you have like a few loose hairs. It could happen the first few washes. Now, if you're use, losing a lot of hairs or it continues happening after a while, then that's considered shedding and that is a sign that something is 
disrupt it in the ferrule, perhaps, you know, the glue is not sufficient or something. But if you just have a couple of random hairs, that's totally normal. It just means that when they were gathering the hairs, because it's all done by hand, those were not ones that were actually included here in the ferrule. They're just kind of loose ones. Just like when you buy like clothing, how sometimes you have like a loose thread on there, uh, you know, that was perhaps cut during the sewing process and they just didn't remove that. So just something to note there, but you can see the difference here in the shape and the size. So overall, I'd have to say all three of those powder brushes are fantastic options. And it's really gonna depend on what your particular needs are if you are in the market for a powder brush. Let's go ahead and take a look at some cheek brushes. Now, I wanna start off with this brush here. This is from Kuyoto. This is the Yoshiki, this is the Gold Series. This is Kalinsky. So this is my first uh, Kalinsky brush. I do have, well, I have a Kalinsky like eye brush or, you know, a small brush, um, but this is my first like larger one. So we're gonna take a look at this. This is sold in a set of five. So just something to note, I don't see it available for individual purchase, but you can see we've got these beautiful golden handles. You have Yoshiki engraved in the handle. Notice it's actually engraved. It's not just like painted on there. And then we have this beautiful candle shape. Now this brush is fantastic because not only do we have this great shape making it very versatile to go under the eyes, highlighter, cheek products, you could use it for contour, but you could use this for powders, liquids, or creams. So this is gonna be pretty versatile. Let's take a look at the demo. Now, this brush is also part of the Yoshiki series, meaning that it was designed by Master Fujimori. The entire gold series of brushes features silky, high-grade Kalinsky bristles. These are very rare, they're hard to find. These are very expensive luxury brushes because it's very difficult to find the longer Kalinsky hair brushes. So Kalinsky hair, if you're unfamiliar with it, it is a type of weasel hair. Sometimes you will see Kalinsky referred to as Kalinsky sable, which again, we're looking at a specific species of weasel. So the hairs are very soft, but they also have a lot of snap. So what that means is that these are going to be a little bit stiffer. They go back to place pretty quickly. And this makes them really ideal for, you know, more precision work. You're not really gonna get that soft airbrush brushed finish with these i mean you can but you know ideally these are meant more for precision applying liquids and creams and so forth and because they're able to maintain their shape so well they're really able to get into those smaller areas easily so a lot of times when you see a kalinsky or even a weasel hairbrush you're going to see those usually on the smaller brush sizes like eyeshadow brushes uh you know eyebrows it's something of that smaller size so so these longer hair like cheek brushes, powder brushes, and so forth are going to have a much higher price tag because the hairs are very rare and hard to get. Because of that, these series are always limited edition and they are often things that you'll see pop up every year or two. So they're not something that's always gonna be around. So if you're interested in a brush like this, I would definitely not wait too long because they are limited edition. You just never know what the next batch will be like. So in my opinion, it's always better to go with the older hairs. They're a little bit softer, a little bit you know, just the quality of the hairs is a little bit better. And as brush demands have increased and so forth over the years, hairs have gotten a little bit harder to source. When you're looking at the older hairs, in my opinion, you're getting a slightly better quality of hair. So I, that's one of the reasons I'm so much into brushes right now, because I, I am trying to think ahead and, you know. Now, stats for this particular brush, again, we've got the Kalinsky hair, it's 161 millimeter brush length and the hair length is 36 millimeters. And we're looking at this candle flame or candle wick shape. So let's go ahead and just take a closer look at this. And then we're gonna move on to the other cheek brushes that I have. So this one here, you can see it is going to have a round ferrule. We have this beautiful gold glossy ferrule. And look at these hairs. You can see how quickly they snap back into place. And you can see that it's really easy to maintain this shape. So you can definitely get into smaller places. You could use this to apply powder like around the nose and things like that as well. 
And in the demo, you could see, you know, powder products, cream products, they all go on beautifully with this. And because of this shape, it's really ideal for any use in small areas on the face. And as you can see in the demos, this brush really works well for blush, highlighter, you know, you could use it for bronzer or contour if you'd like, but it also works really well in the smaller crevices on your face. Now, as I mentioned, I do not have a brush like this, but I did wanna look at a couple shapes that I have that are similar. So this here is a similar shape. This one is the Chikahoto. This is the KZ03. So this is Kazan Squirrel Hair. You can see it is gonna be larger. This was a, it's now discontinued, but this was a limited edition brush as well. And again, this one here is not gonna have as much snap. It's going to, uh, you know, this is specific for powder products. So you can see how this one twirls on my hand versus the Klinsky. You can see that the Klinsky really, you know, kind of stays in its targeted place. Even if you press harder, you can see you're really not going to flare out too much. And if you go soft, you can really, you know, utilize that tip there compared to the KZ, which you know, is definitely just gonna be a bit airier in general. The other one that I have that is fairly close in shape would be the Surat highlighting brush. So this is kind of a softer, more rounded version of a candle flame shape. You can see it's got a thicker diameter here. Brush length is about the same and it's not as tapered at the tip. And again, this and this one is squirrel hair. So you can see it's going to be airy and flare out more so than the Kalinsky as well. Next, we have cheek brushes from Tao House. This one here is our C-Series small cheek brush. And this one features gray squirrel. You can see, again, we have this round flat shape and it's gonna be kind of a smaller cheek brush. You can see how that fits on the cheek. And then from the Oats series, we have this one here, which is going to be pine squirrel. I love the way pine squirrel looks because you have that beautiful gradient. And honestly, it makes me look, it, it looks like Sadie, my dog. <laughs> so um, yeah, you can see it's got a beautiful gradient. Now pine squirrel, every time I hear pine squirrel, I always think, oh, pine needles. It always makes me think of something a little bit pokey. This is still squirrel hair, so it's still soft, but it is not quite as soft as gray squirrel. So if you're using it on the tips, they feel a little bit more blunt at the top. So it's gonna be a little bit pokier in that sense compared to the gray squirrel, which really just kind of bends at will. So there's a little bit more, you can see we have a little bit more snap. It's a little bit stiffer in the pine squirrel versus the gray squirrel, which will be a little bit airier. Size wise, you can see the difference in these two brushes. Let's take a look at the demo. Now the C-Series cheek brush, this is the small cheek brush and it is a round flat shape. We have 153 millimeters for the brush length and 35 millimeters for the brush head. It's incredibly soft, it's small, and it'll sweep on blush very nicely. Because it is a smaller brush, this is gonna be really ideal for those of you with smaller faces or looking to target something in a particular area you know, if you want something more precision. It's very soft and easy to use. So I personally really like this one and it is smaller than a lot of the blush brushes that I already own. So because of that, it stands out and it makes it a lot easier if you're working with something that's a little bit more pigmented and you really wanna make sure that you're targeting that application. So I think it's a really great brush for that purpose. And then the Ode series brush, this is Pine Squirrel, also round flat. We have 130 millimeter brush length here, so it's gonna be smaller than our C-Series brush in total length, but we do have the same bristle length of 35 millimeters. Now, the diameter of this brush, or the width in this case, it is going to be wider, so although we do have the same bristle length, the Oat series brush is going to be a bit wider. It's going to be really great if you pat on your blush or if you want to sweep on. Let's take a closer look at these brushes and a few comparisons. So just so you can see the difference between these two, you can see if I put the Oat series directly behind it, you can see how much of a width difference we have here. 
bristle length is the same. Our shape, you know, it's similar, you know, it's basically the same cut, but this is gonna be a little bit more narrow than the Ode brush. So this is gonna be a little bit thicker and wider this way. So this has got a little bit more hair in it than the C series. So again, overall, I think they're both great brushes. This one here, very small, easy for targeted application. Whereas our Pine Squirrel is kind of like your quintessential blush brush size, if you like kind of more of an average medium blush brush size. So I think it's a really useful size there. Now for a few comparisons, I want to show you this one here. This is the Koyoto Yoshiki Monochrome Cheek Brush. So I picked this one up when I purchased the powder brush. And I just wanted to show you how the brush head compares. You can see it's gonna be a little bit larger. We do have the same type of shape. And the width is actually, it's slightly wider than the Ode, but they're pretty comparable. But overall, you can see it's just a slightly larger brush. I also wanted to share this one here. This is the Chikahoto. This is one of the holiday sets. Uh, I believe it was called the Chocolat set. And this is also Pine Squirrel. You can see it's a fluffier brush. It's a bit more square. We don't have this taper here. And I actually prefer this taper because with this tip, you can apply highlighter and you know just really kind of get it exactly where you want. Whereas this is gonna be more of a blunt square top. So just wanted to compare the difference there. You can see this one's also gonna be a little bit fluffier because it's wider. So you can see how this one performs versus our Ode series here. And our Ode series is great for tapping or sweeping. And just a couple more comparisons. We have the Ode series, the C series. This one here is the Kairado Kiwami cheek brush. And this is the Wayne Goss Airbrush. So let's take a look at these one by one here. So the Kyrado compared to our Pine Squirrel, you can see that we have a much narrower uh, ferrule here and it's gonna be, it looks like it's a little rounder, but they're actually gonna be pretty comparable. This is slightly more rounded, um, but it, it appears significantly more rounded just because it's also more narrow here. So you can see overall, this will give it more of a round shape. And this is a brush you could swirl, but again, it's still gonna be better for sweeping because it does have more of that uh, pinched ferrule there. And that's how it compares to that one. Now you can see that the C-Series brush is gonna be a little bit thinner and our bristle hairs are just a little bit longer. And because of that, you can see how it just really glides on very silkily, silkily. <laughs> and then the uh, Kairado Kawami, you can see because we do have those shorter hairs, look at how it kind of flicks up a little bit more at the end versus this one. So these are similar. And then the Wayne Goss Airbrush. So this looks to be like kind of a similar shape, but you can see we do have more of a rounded edge here. Ferrule wise, they are pretty comparable. This is a little bit wider and it's more pinched. You can see that this one here is really well designed for a sweeping motion, but also to give you that tip at the top. This one here is a little bit too soft to really use the top for highlight. You can do it, but I do find it to be easier with the Pine Squirrel brush in the Ode series just because it is gonna be a little bit stiffer there. So here is the Ode series versus the Wayne Goss. Let's move on to the eye brushes. So I have two eye brushes that you can see the heads are about the same. We've got approximately the same size and shape with both brushes. You can see that the Ode series, again, we saw the rounded bottom, but our handle is gonna be significantly shorter than that of the C series. So although the brush heads are about the same, your handle length is going to be a bit different. The biggest difference though is going to be your bristles. So here in the Ode series, we're looking at Pine Squirrel and you can see we have a nice flow here. This is gonna be intended for powder applications. And then the C series is actually using Weasel. Look how stiff that is, right? And you can see, you know, there's 
not as much flexibility with that and there's quite a bit of snap back. So this is gonna be a stiff brush which makes it really great for getting into certain areas and precise application. Because it is weasel hair, you can use this for liquids, creams, or powders. Let's take a look at the demos. So starting with that in the C series, I wanted to show you what it looked like with a powder application versus a cream application. So on my right eye, I used the Dior Single Eyeshadow in Beige Mitza. And then the left eye, I used the Phytosurgeon's Cream Shadow and Botanical Breeze. Both products apply very beautifully with it, but because this is a stiffer brush, blending this into the crease, it's just, it's not the most comfortable. This is really gonna be met more for lay down of product, getting precision. And because it is such a stiff brush, this is one that you can also use to line the eyes. So on my right eye with the powder application, I chose the Jones Road Single Shadow in dark brown. And you can see, you know, this is obviously not gonna be as thin of a line as you might get from a traditional liner brush, but it's actually pretty thin for an eyeshadow brush. So you can see how precise you can be with a powder application. Likewise, on the left eye, I used the Bobbi Brown Cream Eyeshadow in Bark, and you can see that you're still gonna get that small line, thin line, and you are able to be precise with it. Application is a breeze in both forms. Personally, I prefer this brush more for creams and liquids versus the powder. For something with a powder application, I prefer something a little bit softer, such as that in the Ode series. Now looking at the C series versus the Ode series brush, they're both round flat. And as we mentioned, the bristle heads, they're about the same. So the brush length for the C series is 160 millimeters and the bristle length is 15 millimeters, while that in the Ode series is 135 millimeters for the total brush length and 14 millimeters for the bristles. So you can see they're gonna be really close. So very similar, comparable sizes. Now with the powder application here for the Oat series, I am using the Givenchy 9.12 palette and you can see that the product really goes down nicely with this. Now for the crease, I would still recommend a crease brush, something a little bit fluffier, but in a pinch, this will definitely do it. But this really gives you a nice lay down of the product. The brush is small enough that you can be precise with your placement and it works well overall. So you can see that the pigmentation is definitely strong with the lay down here. Now, as I mentioned, pine squirrel hairs, they do feel a little thicker in diameter, so the tips feel a little bit more blunt than something like gray squirrel. So if you're using the tip of this to kind of edge under the eyes or you know anything like that, it does feel a little prickly. If you're using it to lay down your shadow and just kind of you know use it flat in a sweeping motion, it's very soft and very easy to use. Let's go ahead and take a look at just a couple of quick comparisons. So C-series and then the Ode series. Again, you can see they're going to be pretty similar. The first one I want to take a look at is the Esam W23. So this is gonna be sable hair. And you can see that it is similar, but it's gonna be a bit more rounded and it's a little bit thicker here. So this is slightly fluffier. Because of that, it is a little bit easier to use in the crease, but if you're looking for precision for lay down, these being a little bit thinner are going to give you that. So this one's gonna be most comparable. This Esam W23 is most comparable to the C-Series eyeshadow brush. So you can see here, again, brush head size is similar. We do have a more, uh, a little bit of a sharper rounded curve at the top and it's gonna be a little bit wider. Now you can see how this performs on the, on my hand. You can see because it is a little bit wider, it does move in that direction. You know, pretty easy, easily for, you know, something a little fluffier, but if you're looking to line something, this is something, the C-Series can be used to line an area, whereas the Esam is just a little bit too fluffy for that.
Next, now we've got the C-Series, the Ode Series, and this is the Sonyuji Fusion Worker Brush. So this is synthetic, it's a little fluffier, and you can see that it is not gonna have as much snap as the weasel hair in the Kalinsky, but it's not gonna be as soft as a pine squirrel. So it's kind of an intermediate brush, and size-wise, it's gonna be a bit smaller. You can also see it's gonna be a little bit thicker as well. So you can see how this one performs. The snapback isn't quite as great as that in the C-Series, and by great, I mean as strong, and it is a little bit wider. And then you can see the Ode is definitely going to have a bit more flexibility and give you kind of that smoother lay down process. All right, and last up, this is the Sonia G. This is the S2, so this is going to be one of her special brushes here that recently came out and you can see it's very, very soft. It's gonna be a bit softer than the Pine Squirrel here. Brush shape is going to be similar, but it's a little bit more narrow. You can see that the thickness is similar, and it's really not one to compare to the C-Series. So let's look specifically at the Ode and the Sonya GS2. So overall, these are both great brushes. The Sonya G here is gonna be a little bit softer. Lay down's a little bit softer. It's a little bit smaller overall. This will give you slightly stronger pigmentation because it is slightly stiffer of a brush. And next we have two more brushes. So from the C series, we have the eyebrow brush. So we're not really gonna look at comparisons for these, but I did wanna uh, kinda just show you how these perform here and talk about these a little bit before the demo. So here's the eyeshadow or eyebrow brush. You can see that it is a nice stiffness here, yet still flexible. So you can also use it for lining the eyes, which I like to use it for, but I've been using it a lot with the uh, Suku. This is the eyebrow palette and this is number two. So this is kind of like a, a cream powder product and I've been using that a lot with this eyebrow brush. Now from the Oats series, we have the pencil brush and it's incredibly soft. You can see how much flexibility and softness you have here. It feels great to line the eyes, but I did wanna bring your attention to the fact that it is not fully filled. We do have a little bit of gap between the hairs and the ferrule here. So that is, to me, that is a detriment. <laughs> so uh, I'm not a fan of that, but I love the way the brush feels, but I would prefer this to be fully filled. So to me, I wouldn't recommend this one. Let's take a look at the demos. And here is we're looking at the C-Series eyebrow brush. This is made out of water badger. So with water badger, you could use this with liquids, creams, or powder products. And you can see you can get a pretty precise line. It's gonna be stiff. This is an angled shape here. So it makes it really easy to kind of flick on some eyebrow powder or you know cream but you can also use this to line the eyes. And you're not gonna get the thinnest line because the brush is not the thinnest, but you're going to get a nice tight line and it's one that, it doesn't flare when you're applying the product, so you can definitely keep your line precise. The eyebrow brush has a total length of 150 millimeters and the bristle length is seven millimeters at the longest portion. So it's gonna be a pretty small brush ideal for lining and eyebrows. Now this pencil brush is ideal for inner corner work and uh, you know putting a little shadow underneath the eyes. It's definitely too soft to really get a line of product on the uh, you know upper lid, but I think it's a very soft, comfortable brush to use. But again, because there is that gap between the bristles and the ferrule there, I wouldn't really recommend this brush. You know, I think there are some other pencil brushes there that are just a little bit more dense and then you don't have to worry about water getting into the ferrule and then having an issue. So, you know, to me, that's a defect in the brush. Now the pencil brush is made out of gray squirrel and horsehair, but I have to say, I can't really feel the horsehair. It's a very small brush, so you know, you're not really going to be able to distinguish different fibers as easily as you would with say a powder brush or a cheek brush that's a bit larger, but this feels very soft. And to me, using it on my skin, it feels comparable to one that is made out of 
completely gray squirrel hair. Now it's a round tapered brush. I really like the shape and the size of it. We have a total length of 130 millimeters and our hair length is 11 millimeters at the longest. So although I said we weren't gonna do comparisons of these, I did wanna just compare a couple of the pencil brushes to just kind of show you some alternatives. So this is the Ode Series Tau House. And again, you can see kind of that, let me put my hand here so you can, it focuses better, but you can see that gap there between the bristles and the ferrule. And then for comparison, this is a Chickahoto KZ08. Again, this one's discontinued, but just to show you how we don't have any gap there, how this is fully filled. And then this is the pencil brush from the Chickahoto Z series, which again is fully filled. So if you're looking for something this shape and size, um, you know, I would recommend this Chickahoto Z series. I think this is a great option. It is a little wider at the base. So you can see that our Ode series brush is going to be a little bit airier, a little bit wispier, whereas we have a little bit more structure from the Z series just because it is going to be a little bit more of a it's slightly denser, we have more hair here. So it, performance wise though, it's gonna be pretty comparable, but this will give you a little bit more stronger pigmentation just because of that density change there. So I would recommend the Z series one as a good alternative to that Ode series brush. So I hope this has been helpful. I think all of the brushes featured here today are great in their own right. And they all have specific features or characteristics that make them ideal for certain situations or skin types. So I hope this has been helpful to sort of break that down. So let's just do a quick summation of everything that we featured here today. And we're starting off with the Koyoto Yoshiki Monochrome Powder Brush. This is gonna be great for sensitive skin. This is perfect for setting or finishing powder and I think it's a really great brush you can see that I've used this in a ton of videos it's one of my favorite most used brushes and this is the one that Fude Beauty is providing for the giveaway so if you are interested in entering the giveaway all you have to do is make a purchase through my affiliate link down below in the description box and you have one month to do that I'll have the date the exact date on the screen and in the description box but anybody who makes a purchase through my link during that time period is automatically entered into the giveaway and uh, one winner will be randomly selected and you'll receive this beautiful brush. Next we have the C-Series brush from Tao House. This is the powder brush. It is gray squirrel. It's incredibly soft. It's a slightly smaller brush than the Yoshiki monochrome brush. So this is great for setting and finishing powder, but if you like those larger powder brushes or a bronzer brush, this can definitely be used in those applications as well. And then rounding out our powder brushes, we have the Oat Series Tau House brush, which is going to be gray squirrel and goat. This one has longer bristles than either of the other two. And this is great, in my opinion, for setting or finishing powder to give you kind of that light, airy finish. This is gonna be great for those with dry skin as long as you don't have sensitive skin. If your skin is dry and sensitive, I would recommend going with a full squirrel or fox hair instead of a blend. But if you have oily skin or if you have combination, this would be a great brush for that as well. And again, I'd recommend it for setting or finishing because it gives you this really nice airy finish. Moving on, we have the Koyoto Yoshiki Gold Series Cheek Brush, which I think is a fantastic brush for applying liquids, powders, or creams. You can use this to put on under eye products such as concealer or powder. You can use it to powder in specific areas or apply you know, concealer in strategic locations. You can use this for cream or liquid blushes, highlighters, and so forth. So it's a very versatile brush, but this one is only available as part of the set. But definitely check it out because it is rare and these are not going to be around long. And then who knows when they will be back. Then we took a look at the C-Series from Tao House, the small cheek brush. And this is gonna be a small precision blush brush for uh, from gray squirrel hair. And this is gonna be great for those of you with a smaller cheekbone, or if you want precision uh, for your application. It's incredibly soft. It's also gonna be great for sensitive skin. 
for from the Oats series, our cheek brush here is Pine Squirrel. And this is gonna be more of a medium size and it's great for that sweepy motion or for patting things on. We have a little bit more snap to the fibers and your pigmentation for application is a little bit stronger than that in the C series as you could have seen during the demos. Moving on to the eyeshadow brushes, the C series eyeshadow brush features weasel hair and this has a lot of snap. This is great for liquids, creams, or powders for more of a precision lay down. You can also use this to line the eyes because it is pretty stiff. So it's a pretty versatile brush. I personally prefer it for wear liquids and creams on the eyes over a powder. For powder, I like the Ode Series Pine Squirrel brush, which is soft for lay down, but if you are using the bristles to go underneath, it can be a little bit pokey because the Pine Squirrel hairs in general are just a, not quite as soft as Gray Squirrel. So just something to note there, but for lay down, it's very soft and it gives you a, a nice level of pigmentation for powder products. And next, moving on to the eyebrow brush from the C series. You can see we have Water Badger here. It's angled, pretty stiff. You can use this for brows or for lining the eyes. And because we it keeps its shape pretty well, you're gonna get a very precise, even line if you're using this to line the eyes. But keep in note, it's not going to be necessarily as thin of a line as you might get from a liner brush. And last up, we have the Ode Series Pencil Brush, which is incredibly soft and comfortable to use, but we do have a gap between the bristles and the ferrule, so I would recommend against this, and I would instead recommend the Z Series from Chikahoto for their pencil brush, which is slightly more dense, but it's going to feel very similar on the eye, and it does a great job, so performance is gonna be comparable between the two. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much to Food A Beauty for providing me with these brushes for this video. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of these items, as well as what brushes are your personal favorites in your collection. So please let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget to enter the giveaway if you are interested. And all of the details for that are down below in the description box. So I will definitely leave that information there. And please be sure to share your thoughts down below in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you very soon.